Good morning, this is Greg Suddy, Suddy on Soccer, and I am with Captain Fantastic. This is Craig Childs, and I'm not even gonna go through all the accolades. Everybody watching knows who you are. Yep. Um, let's talk a little bit about last season, Craig. Um, I'm sitting up in the stands, and we lose the one early game during the season and go into the playoffs, and it looks like solid all the way through, home field advantage all the way through. And then the magic bounce off the cross, uh, crossbar. Yeah. Talk about the season. It was a good year. I think it was a good year for the organization uh, on and off the field. You know, obviously um, the results didn't fall our way towards the end of the year Yeah. Um, in terms of that game in Mon uh, against Monterey. But, you know, it, it was a good year for the organization with Landon coming in and selling some tickets and drawing some interest in, and some really good performances throughout the year. We just fell short a little bit there in playoffs and – you know, that's the focus, obviously, going into this year is getting those little details right and making sure we are ready to go. Well, you mentioned Landon Donovan. Um, what a huge asset he was to, you know, bringing in the fans, bring, you know, bringing attention to the league, not just the soccer. Yep. But to the league and the game worldwide. I mean, he, he his name is so well known and, he, and having him on the team. Um, it doesn't look like he's going to be with the soccer this season, at least from my point of view. I mean, you probably know more than I do, but he's wrapped up in the USL yeah. right now. Uh, we brought in Slav, Ubi Perepovic. Yep. How does that look? In? Slav looks good. Very smart player, very technical player. He's going to be a big, uh, a big help for the team for sure. There's so much continuity. The team knows each other. The, the team chemistry is so solid. Um, I, I'd like to move forward a little bit. Uh, you guys uh, went down to Australia. Yeah. Talk about the World Cup. Yeah, it was a good experience. Um, obviously, you know, we lost in the round of 16 to Czech. And, um, you know, we played pretty well. We had them, I think, in the first quarter and, and stumbled for about five minutes there in the second and cost yep. us a couple goals and, and put us on the back foot. But, you know, it was a good experience. And, and Australia was a great country. We enjoyed ourselves. Yeah. Um, but in the same light, you know, we just weren't able to get it done. And, and Mexico went down there and was a great, <laughs> wow. you know, Did they just unit. Around, and, yeah. and they played together as a group and, and really uh, put on a show for the fans. So is it? did you get a feel that you were sort of the, um, sort of the Black Knight team as far as, as, far as you know, the, being the United States national team down there? A little bit. Yeah, yeah it, it felt like it was us against the world kind really? of uh, down there. And... Um, I don't think there were that many people internally within the World Mini Football Federation that gave us very much credit or supported us much, in my opinion. Interesting. Uh, it was European, the Czech team from Europe that yep, everyone yep. cared about, and yep. Mexico from North America. But, yep. you know, the point is Mexico had a better team. They had a more well-rounded group. They had a better balance to their team, and, and they deserved to win. Well, um, yeah, the Czech Republic is the defending champions, Yep. and they came to play. And, yeah, and they weren't they weren't unbeatable as was shown, and I think that the game that you guys played, I think that the from my observation, the majority of the game you won the game. Yeah, but the scoreboard just didn't show it out at the end. Yep. Yeah, we made some mistakes coming out of the back in that check game that that cost us. But um, you know, it was a fun experience. It was good to get our legs going before preseason camp, and I think uh, I think it's going to benefit the entire organization into this season. So I, sp I spoke with Rene Ortiz, and one of the things that we were talking about was how awesome it was that the United States fell in line backing the Mexican team once the U.S. had been eliminated. Yeah. Not just you guys that were down there, the team, but uh, also the fans. Yep. That's unique. I mean, not too often do you see American soccer fans supporting the Mexican soccer team. No, thinking? that is right, you know, and, and obviously there are a lot of familiar faces, you sure. know, kind of across the league and... Uh, and into Mexico, and, and I'll be honest, I haven't really rooted for Mexico that often. And, right. <laughs> you know, if I, if I was going to watch anyone win it, I was hoping it was my teammates. And, yeah. Um, yep. and you know, yeah, we backed them when we were down there, and, and I'm glad that they got the wind under their belt, and I'm willing to hear it for a couple years because, you know, <laughs> it shows that, that they've got that championship mentality, and I'm hoping that they carry that into this year. I love it. Uh, the other the, – dynamic that was going on down there was the MASL representation. There was solid MASL representation on both America and the United States, or Mexico and the United States, but then also on the Brazilian team. Yep. And that was, uh, it showed to be a, a huge representation. How does that match up with the, I don't know, the skill level or the uh, organizational level maybe with what the 
European teams are doing with mini football? You know, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how, how it's run and how it's operated over there. I can tell you some of those Czech players and, and Kazakhstan or whatever, and, yeah. uh, they're quality and they've got some talent. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think indoor soccer is a U.S. sport, and I, and I think right. it, it's a North American sport, right. and, and it shows that, you know, we're, we're playing this game at a high level. Um, and we're able to transition with boards or without boards, futsal, seven aside, right. indoor, it doesn't matter. Yep. And I think if they put a tournament where you played a futsal game and you played a seven aside game and you played a couple indoor games and you did a round robin of all the above, I think that they would wow. show that the North American players are the best small sided players in the country. And that's why they earn money in the U.S. to play. And, yeah. you know, I was looking at some of those Czech players wondering if they could transition to the indoor game and mm. thinking they, they would. And a few of them would be solid additions but again i don't know what their league's like i don't know what they get paid i don't know what kind of work life they have you know i don't know anything about what's going on there for the most part right. um, and and i don't know if they know what's going on here but you know it was clear that the msl had a good representation yeah. and, and players you know uh in the semis you know it, it was a handful of msl players and they were the dominant ones in those games that, that they ended up winning yeah. so so now, going back to 2015, the Czech Republic, with the boards, on the format of, the, of indoor soccer, did play well. Yep. Um, a lot of those teams uh, came here to, and played in 2015 with the, uh, with the boards and did seem to adapt pretty nicely. What do you think the possibility is that the World Mini Football Federation is going to try the indoor game? Uh, I don't think it's high. You know, there are no arenas in India. There are no arenas in North Africa. There are no arenas in in right, right, Europe. I mean, right. what they're not going to make them up. They're not going to build them. They're right. not going to reconstruct them. And quite frankly, that's why North America is better at that. And so, yeah. you know, it, it would be nice to have them play indoor soccer, but they're not going to. You know, I they mean, don't have hockey unless they transition those right, hockey arenas right, right. In, in Scandinavia or wherever it is to – be able to play indoor, mm. There's there are no arenas for them to play at. So that's the difference, right, is we've got indoor arenas and yeah. we've got hockey facilities um, that we can play indoor soccer in, and I think they have foot seven courts and futsal courts that they play soccer in, and right. we transition to their game and they transition to our game. But, you know, as we all know, the little details win you or lose you the games in the semis and the finals and stuff right. like that, and, and having those boards help us with those little details, and right. not having those boards helps them with those little details. Absolutely. So, you know, it, it is what it is. I think as long as the World Fo Mini Football Federation continues to do the World Cup with boards and without boards, it's, it's fair and unfair to everybody equally. Very you know, nice. it's like, hey, we just played your game. Come yeah. and play our game and let's see how it goes. And, yeah, well put. And I think you just got to go back and forth with the format. Um or or just call it a seven aside World Cup and don't call it you know I don't exactly know it's sure. it's not indoor it's not arena right. until there are boards out there That's and right. uh, we'll see how it goes we'll see what they do okay let's talk about the upcoming season I I was looking at the schedule I happen to bring a little printout of the schedule here because I haven't memorized it and I'm pretty sure that the only thing on here that you're really looking at is November 24th against California. Yeah. I'm just assuming yeah. that that's how you roll. Yep. That that's the only thing that really that you're even seeing on this whole piece of paper is that one game. Um, but I just would like to draw your attention to this road trip yep. down here. From January 24th to February 8th, East Coast, two games back-to-back. -back, Monterey, Sonora, Mexico, back-to-back. -back, and then two and three days in, in Florida, Orlando and Florida. And that's going to be grueling. That's going to test the depth of the squad. You know, and we're out here at practice and there's 25 players signed and everybody is very talented and everybody's looking for games and where they're going to play and how they're going to feature in the group. And what I can tell you, you know, is that it's a grueling schedule and everybody's going to be needed. And there will, there will be players in this group that play three or four games based on need. And, you know, people have to understand and accept their role within an organization. Right. There will be players that play you know, 22 games and there will be players that play three and everybody's equally as important. Yes. Um, but I very much think with that schedule, there aren't going to be many players, if any, that play all 24 preseason game or, or regular season games. Interesting. Um, yeah. You know, it doesn't make any logical sense to play in Monterey and Sonora back to back when you have 25 guys knowing you have to fly in three days to Florida or whatever. Exactly. And so, you know, I think it's going to be a very much staggered situation. You're going to play in these two games. We're going to fly you directly to Florida. He's going to play in those two games. He's going to fly here. And I think it comes, you know, it puts a lot of 
responsibility on the organization to figure out the rosters and utilize the groups as best that we can to win each game. Yeah, um, but in the same light, not completely wear each other out. And quite frankly, that's part of our advantage um, being with the San Diego Soccers in comparison to other organizations is, you know, we've got depth. We I can was just take injuries. Ask that question. You know, we can take injuries and still feel the team that's capable to win the league. And um, we've got depth and everybody wants to play and everybody's going to get games. And yep. it comes down to making the most of your minutes and not worrying about anything else other than what you do on that field. We've got a new signing in goal, too. And yep. it looks really good that Boris isn't going to have to shoulder the entire season. Yeah. No, Diego's been very good and honestly impressive. And his feet are good and he's a good shot blocker. And yeah. He's going to play games, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. Boris knows that. Um, and it's like, listen, he's got to make the, the best of his moments when he gets out there. Right. And he's going to be a big addition to this team. And he's going to need to show up when his number gets called. For the most part, however, the the uh, roster the San Diego Soccer is putting on the field this season looks a lot like it did last season. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the results last season were really, really good uh, during the regular season. There was the argument, I think, that was at least publicly – that uh, there was too many games against lower quality teams, pr primarily say uh, Turlock, yep. um, and so there was the argument that maybe the goals, the goal differential, wasn't legitimate. Maybe the win loss record wasn't legitimate. Um, that's just not going to be the case this season. No, but th that that argument is a ridiculous argument. It doesn't make any sense because there are a handful of teams in every conference that aren't very good. Thank you. And everybody plays them, and it Thank doesn't you. really matter what everyone thinks. The point is, you got to play every game to win the game, and right. we don't give it. We don't care if it's Turlock, or we don't. And if it's Baltimore, there's a little more importance and meaning to it. But the point is, right. you're you go through the same motions of I've got a game today, and this is what I've got to do to prepare myself for the game. Obviously, it's nice to play Baltimore and Milwaukee and Monterey and these big teams for Clearly. the draw and the allure and Clearly. for the fans. Clearly. Uh, but but we don't play these teams because we're scared of them, and we don't not play them because we don't <laughs> like them. It's a money thing, and everybody in our league should understand that. And if you're a general fan yeah. and you don't understand that the schedule is based on money, then yeah, you don't yeah. really get it because right. traveling back and forth to Baltimore costs a lot of money for yeah. 25 dudes to do, yep. and traveling to Turlock doesn't cost a lot of money, just right. like it's easy for Baltimore to go to Missawagua or yeah, whatever yeah, and yeah, walk yeah. them 15 nothing. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's hard for them to travel to San Diego. So the point is yep. the fans and the players want to play in those big name games we want to be on the field for that game sure. we want those games to happen but it's a balance between money and and those games and right. i think every year we should have a handful of those games that are the marquee games right. but you can't play everyone across the league or every franchise would go bankrupt and fold Oof. and so people need to understand the 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 indoor soccer world and how it is operating and how yeah. it works and it's like we like playing and it and um, I'd like to play a few really good games a year, but right. in the same light, I'd like to also play for 10 years and not have franchises that go here and then fold and no then win, kidding. then fold, then play, then fold. And it's like, you know, no. take those franchises and kick rocks. Maybe they should have done a better budgeting setup and right. figured out who they needed to play in order right. to keep themselves sustainable for a longer period of time. But. You know, that's all general manager stuff that I don't need to worry about. Um, I, I'm excited to play Baltimore in Baltimore. I'm excited to go to Milwaukee and have them come to us and yeah, play yeah, those yeah. big games. Yeah, and I want to be on that field uh, and win, win, lose, or tie. And the point is, you know, those experiences will help us in the playoffs. Um, being in those big games will help us down the road. And you mentioned, you mentioned the draw. The, the, these big games, they cost for the team to go for sure. But the hope is, anyway, and the expectation, of course, is that there's going to be a larger fan turnout yeah. for those games. And that's a real exciting thing. When you guys, I mean, when Landon came and the, and the, and the arena filled up that much more, um, how exciting was that to play and, and to experience that excitement, that electricity? Yeah. No, it was fun. You know, obviously, it was a few really good crowds and... and when we played Baltimore three or four years ago, we had a stellar crowd. That's and, right. And, you know, we like big atmospheres. We like the, the fans coming. Um, and we hope playing those extra teams will really benefit us. But, again, 
arena availability is the, is one of the big deals yeah, that yeah. handcuffs or makes an organization and it's quite frankly handcuffing this organization right now no we play kidding. baltimore on a wednesday like don't tell me how many extra fans are going to show up there will be another That's 200 true. people that show up on a wednesday because Maybe. it's baltimore and Maybe. so the point is yeah you know if the arena is not available then it and you put yourself in a funky date situation yeah. then it's like how much can you really market a Wednesday game? You know, people have lives and they've got work the next day and stuff like that. And so many kids are coming to these games and, a lot, you know, a lot of them are going to school. The parents yep. don't want the school thing going on, you know, for the next morning. Um, mentioning arenas, I think it's pretty public information at this point that uh, there's just been discussion about the San Diego Soccers building their own arena. Yep. What's going on with that? You know, it sounds like it's in the works. I, I honestly don't have that much information to disclose other than, you know, it sounds like there's something in the works and right. I'm excited for it. And, and to be able to play 10 Saturday dates would, I know, right? would be fantastic. And that's really how you draw crowds. And, Absolutely. and that's why the goals are doing so well. And that's why some I of the other kidding. franchises do so well. And it's like... If you play Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, 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 it's like, yeah, you might get three or 4,000 fans, good for us. Right. But if you, if you played a consistent 10 Saturdays, you know, it might be five or six or 7,000 7, fans. 000. And so the point is arena availability makes a big difference for everybody across the league and the general fans don't necessarily take that into consideration a lot. No, I get that. Um, but it's extremely important. You know, yeah. I, I honestly think we have one Saturday game off the top of my head and you know, it's wow. like, hey, how how good could your attendance possibly be in one Saturday? Let me see, um, what, let me see what we got. Just looking at this Sunday, Friday, Sunday, 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 Wednesday. That's Baltimore. Wow. Saturday. You're right. Milwaukee. And then Sunday and sun, Sunday, Sunday. You're right. Yeah. It's Sunday night game. And Sunday games are OK. It's an earlier time. Yeah. You know, it's a five o'clock start instead of seven. But still, in actuality, that really is a school night, you know, for the, for yes, the, for the parents. Yes, 100%. And the kids. People don't want to leave their house on a Sunday afternoon sometimes. You know, that's their right. family time and they've got things to do. Um, but in the same light, it is an earlier game. I enjoy being done at 7 30 and not yeah. 11 o'clock and yeah. having my kids run around the field and yeah. stay in the locker room and stuff like that. Right. So there's a give and take to all of it, but it's not rocket science. Saturday night's the best night. Saturday yep. night's the highest featured night. That's yep. when attendance has always been best historically. Yep. Yep. And so, you know, if you're not playing a lot of Saturdays, you're not drawing a lot of fans. And that's just what it is. Fridays are decent, but people have work. Sundays are decent, but people have work the next day. And so. That's right. Saturday nights are the nights, and if, if you're limited in those dates, you're going to be limited in your draw. That's right. All right, you mentioned your kids. One of the things I love to do at the games is going to visit with your family. Uh, love your dad. Love your kids. Yeah. How every, how's everybody doing? Everyone's doing good. They're excited. You know, kids are a year older, and yep. I think understand it a little bit more. That's and so excited cool. to be back in the arena and games. They went to the Ontario game, and I got to sit with them in the second half, and they're oh, nice. excited. You know, so... Yeah, it's it's another year, and uh, and the family all be there. They're all super excited for the year, and and you know optimistic about um, how this year might shake out for us. All right, well, I'm excited about the year too. Yeah, it, the, it, it's it's such a long off season. It, it, even if it isn't really a long off season, it sure feels like a long off season. It does. Yep. And it's time to get going back on. Yep. Craig Childs. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for joining Thank me today. You. Greg Suddy, Suddy on Soccer, Craig Childs. Thank you, man. Yep. Hey, guys, if you like what you just watched, follow me on social media. Go to studyonsoccer.com, click on the Patreon link, and uh, support me there. Thank you very much.